In this video I'm gonna have five, five Lumix autofocus tips for you guys. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto. I'm a photographer and a Lumix ambassador from Helsinki, Finland. And in this video I'm gonna have five autofocus, Lumix autofocus tips for you guys. And some of these tips may be familiar to you already, but at least it happens to me all the time that I kind of forget some of the features and functions that my Lumix cameras have. And then, of course, I forget to use those features and functions. And I suspect the same thing happens to you. You know the features are there, but you forget to use them. So I figured I make this video to refresh your memory um, about some of the autofocus functions and features. So let's get started and let's check out these autofocus tips that I have for you. And if you find this video useful, please buy me a cup of coffee, there's a link down below. That would be awesome and it would also help me to make more of these videos for you. And now let's get to the tip number one. Use the touch functions, especially if you are using the rear screen to compose your picture. The fastest way to move the autofocus around the screen is to touch and drag. But if you activate the touch pad AF, you can use the screen to move the autofocus point. Even if you use the viewfinder, you just move your finger on the screen and the autofocus point moves in the viewfinder. And this is especially handy on cameras like the G90 and other cameras that don't have the joystick. And you can access the touch functions in the custom spanner menu, just choose the operation and then touch settings. And there you can activate the touch screen, you can activate the touch AF and you can activate the touch pad and you can even select the touch sensitive area of the screen in this menu. There is also something called touch tab and that's the virtual function buttons that you get on the right side of the screen. You can activate and remove them in this menu if you prefer to do so. I have them off because I don't like them on my screen. And if you are not using the touch functions, there are two other ways to activate the autofocus. The most common and most used way to activate the autofocus is to press the shutter halfway and then the camera focuses before it takes the picture. And then the other way is to use one of the uh, function buttons to activate the autofocus. The most common button to use is the back button here uh, on the rear of the camera right by the viewfinder it says AFAE lock except for the S series cameras it says AF on and I have a whole video on the back button focusing the benefits of it I'll put the link to that video at the end of this video so you can check it out uh, if you're interested but depending on your Lumix camera you can also use some of the other function buttons to activate the autofocus and for example, on this Lumix GX880, I'm using the function button FN3 on the left side of the camera to activate the autofocus. And that is because I usually use the camera like this, a little bit lower here, but I'm holding it like this because I'm shooting um, at waist level. And my left thumb rests on this button very naturally, so it's a convenient way to activate the autofocus. And my shutter release only takes the picture, because I want to separate the autofocus and the shutter release uh, from each other, so I can control them separately. So it's not always necessary to have the autofocus on the right side of the camera, so that you operate it with your right hand. Sometimes it works really well to operate the autofocus with your left hand, like in this case. So check out which buttons you can use on your Lumix camera to activate the autofocus, because sometimes it can be very handy 
to be able to activate the autofocus with your left thumb, for example. Change the autofocus area to match your subject. On your Lumix camera, you have several choices regarding the autofocus area. You can select single point, multiple points, or you can even create your own custom autofocus area. And you can change the size of the single autofocus point by activating the autofocus area selector and then hit the down arrow on the D-pad and then you can use the front and rear dials to change the size of the autofocus point. And if your subject is relatively small in the frame, select a very small single autofocus point to make sure you nail the focus and you focus exactly on your subject, your main subject. And sometimes the pinpoint option is the best because every time you focus, the screen is going to uh, give you a zoomed enlarged view of the focus point and you can see very clearly that you nail the focus every time. Take advantage of all these multiple uh, choices to make sure you nail the focus in every situation. Use the face and eye detection if you are taking pictures of people. It's very reliable and it lets you fully concentrate on your model and on the situation. So that you can get the best possible picture without having to worry about the focusing at all. And I use it all the time when I take pictures of people. When you go close enough, it focuses, the camera focuses on the eye of the model. And if you're a little bit further away, it focuses on the face of the model. And you can activate the face and eye detection by first activating the focus area, focus point selector, and then go all the way to the left. And there it says face and eye detection. Activate that every time you take pictures of people. And on the G9 and the S series full frame cameras, you also have the animal detection option. And use that if you take pictures of animals. Sometimes you may want to use manual focus, but it's good to remember that you still have the autofocus option even if you are on manual focus. If you have one of the buttons programmed to activate uh, the autofocus, you can press that button and the camera will autofocus even if you are on manual focus mode. That's very handy if you, for whatever reason, need to refocus very quickly on manual focus mode. It's good to remember that you always have the autofocus function also available even if you are on manual focus mode. And generally it's not a very good idea to first focus using the center focus point and then recompose after focusing and take the picture. It's a much better idea to first compose then move the focus point on your main subject, then focus and take the picture. You'll get much better and uh, mu much more constant results uh, using the latter method. I hope you find at least some of these tips useful. And here are a couple of other videos that you may also find useful. Please check them out. Thank you so much and I'll see you again in the next one.